Hi, I am Sharon Knight. I'm president and CEO of Hope Communities, and I am so glad that you joined us for our building community check-in. We started these during the quarantine because we knew that people might be feeling isolated and might not know which information to trust because there's so many facts and figures out there for people to, um, to grasp onto. And we wanted you to know um, some information about the virus, resources available to you, maybe provide a little inspiration and maybe provide some activities that would help you to get through this period. So we started the Facebook uh, Live program three times a week, and now we are doing this event on Tuesdays and Fridays at 3 p.m. So we hope that you will enjoy this show and continue to um, check in with us on those days. So one of the things uh, that we want to do is to try to get comments and feedback from people in our community. Building community has always been important to us, and we know it's more important now than ever. And so the Facebook Live uh, format allows you to comment, use the chat section to comment, to ask questions, uh, to um, send information to us that we may not have already known. So if you um, see that, usually it is on the far right-hand side of your screen, but sometimes it's on the left, but it'll say the chat function and you can just type in. So if you're listening live now, that's awesome. Just sign, sign your name and let us know. Uh, we do know that a lot of people watch these shows after the fact though, and so our videos of the shows are on our Facebook page. And so please refer anybody that you know that might want the information from today to go to our Facebook page to listen to the video. And also anyone can always reach out to us at info at hopecommunities.org uh, with information, with questions, or with requests for help. We'd love to hear from you. So I'd like to have a little bit of news each time. And uh, I'm not sure if you saw this, but um, our governor did sign a bill that provides $20 million in housing assistance to help renters and homeowners who are unable to make payments. And $20 million for small businesses that have not previously received the payroll protection plan dollars, and especially those who are veteran, minority, or women owned. There was a $5 million uh, earmark for basic utility services for those who are financially impacted by the pandemic, and there's additional behavioral health dollars to assist those who are facing substance abuse and domestic violence issues during this time. Mm -hmm. um, funding for unemployment, which is at a record level uh, in our state is being boosted as well as sick time for hourly workers. Lots going on with that. Remember that um, across Colorado, we have had an uptick in the coronavirus in cases as towns have relaxed their restrictions. So please remember to still wear masks and still keep social distancing. It is so important and we are not out of this yet. Also, I want you to remember that Denver's primary ballots are due on June 30th, and your voice and your vote matters. You should have already received your ballot in the mail. Uh, you can't mail it any longer because of the time frame, but there are lots of drop boxes around town, so please make sure that you get out there and vote. So it's my pleasure today to have a guest on the show, Jamie Polyard. Marketing and Communications Coordinator for Hope Communities is going to provide us with some information on mindfulness. And as we have shared in the past, it's really important to look for resources that support, support your mental health as well as your physical health during this time. Many of us find um, inspiration in quotes and uh, in, they help to inspire us and set our intention for the day. And Jamie's going to share one of her favorite ones as we go, get going, and she says, um, this has helped her a lot in the last few weeks. Absolutely, thank you, Sharon. Um, this has definitely been a quote I have gone to frequently and as we've been dealing with quarantine. Um, every day, think as you wake up. Today I, am, today, I am fortunate to be alive. I have a precious human life. I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to use all of my energies to develop myself, to expand my heart out to others, 
to achieve enlightenment for the being, for the benefit of all beings. I'm going to have kind thoughts towards others. I'm not going to get angry or think badly about others. I'm going to benefit others as much as I can. And that's from the Dalai Lama in context with mindfulness practice today. I love that quote. I, I already yeah. told Jamie, I think I'm going to have to print that and put it by my desk. <laughs> <laughs> there's, you know, there's so many stresses out there right now yeah. and so much going on. And so to completely bring us back to center and have a quote like this, it would just be awesome. Mm -hmm. So, um, Jimmy, why do you think that mindful pra mindfulness practices are really important at this time? Well, I know we've touched a little bit on some of the shows that we've done, um, but I'm personally fascinated by a lot of the brain science behind mindfulness. Mm -hmm. um, we know that it helps with um, control anxiety and depression. Um, but it's also so super important because studies are showing that it's helping strengthening immune systems. Mm -hmm. So as we are going back to our workplaces, our children are returning to school, like anything you can do to help strengthen all of your systems is beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, recent research has shown that developing a mindfulness practice, even as, as little as five minutes a day, can also help people at risk um, for heart disease. Um, it helps decrease cognitive decline as aging and Alzheimer's. Um, it, we know about depression and anxiety and the direct mm -hmm. benefit to depression and anxiety. Chronic pain. Um, it also helps improve the quality and quantity of your sleep. And it can also improve your personal relationships. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also really fascinated by a lot of information around reduction in implicit bias, um, particularly with current events that we've been going through. One of my favorite leaders and thinkers on this is a woman by the name of Rhonda McGee. Um, mm -hmm. She's a professor at the University of San Francisco, and she's a thought leader in meditation and practice. She's leading kind of the charge and getting mindfulness more integrated into higher education, into law. She works with a lot of lawyers in mindfulness, and also social change work. So she actually has a new book out, um, if anybody's interested, she's, she's great, but it's called The Inner Work of Social Justice. It's a great resource because it has some of the science behind this work, as well as some tools that you can incorporate into your daily life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and I think as we shared, right, we're, we know we're going to be living with this virus for a long time. Um, we're already seeing an uptick in a lot of different states. Um, so that means that we're going to be facing some even more new challenges and changes, um, which brings with it its own level of stress. Sure. Um, returning to work for some people, right? This has some stresses and challenges and rewards. We all miss being with our colleagues, but we're also worried about the impact that this is going to have on our life mm -hmm. and our health. So again, coming back to a mindfulness practice, anything we can do to be present to those stresses and to help reduce and, and help boost our immune system is beneficial. Oh, great. I mean, you are so bright. I mean, this is going to be a, a stressful time. I mean, we're trying to come up with new habits. The new normal never, ever has felt normal. <laughs> and so, you know, we have to figure out how to navigate through those periods. And, um, you know, more people have been socially isolated. And if we have an uptick again, I mean, that's just going to be crushing for people. So starting this practice now, um, might be really good timing yeah. for people yeah. um, to really get some some strength and some skills. So I would love to um, get some ideas about some specific tactics for you. Um, could you give yeah. us one to start off with? Absolutely. Well, and I think today I was going to share just, I know, as life gets busy again, right, and it's been complicated, sometimes it's difficult to have a big mindfulness practice. I mean, I know a lot of friends that sit for 20 and 30 minutes at a time, and I, I can't always do that in my daily life when you're busy. Especially if you have kids. Especially if you have children, <laughs> right? And we're all navigating what this means to our lives, and there's a whole different complexity to our life right now. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of different techniques that you can do for just five minutes a day mm -hmm. right, to help incorporate mindfulness, to help strengthen a mindfulness practice, um, maybe develop one that you've kind of developed during quarantine where everybody's mm -hmm. at. But there's lots of different techniques, and I thought I would share five Five-minute okay. practices, right, that you can kind of incorporate and spread out through your day as right. possible. So one that I go to frequently is in the morning. 
right, even before I get out of bed, before I touch my feet on the ground, I take five minutes to do some deep breathing, to center myself, take five deep breaths, and set an intention for my day. Um, mm -hmm. I think about what is going to matter the most to me that day, um, how do I want to show up for my family, my friends, coworkers, and instead of reaching for your phone to check email first thing, which is also a bad habit I have, I, I own that, um, maybe try to just use that moment to do some centering, to think about how you want to start your day. Yeah. There are a lot of great applications out there that you can do that will help guide you through this process. Um, some of them have some free thing from some free guided meditation um, that you can listen to. There's some that are subscription based on monthly. But there's also so many resources if you just Google intention setting, right? Morning intention setting. And um, we'll share one today that I found um, that I've used a few times that mm -hmm. I like. She has a British accent, so it's kind of nice to kind of have a little different culture into your daily morning. But we'll share those in the chat feature as well. And OK, so yeah. that's awesome. I think um, I have to watch the phone right away as well. Yeah. But I, um, I've also, I have a sign in front of me when I wake up that says, be thankful. That's one of the first things that I see, That's which great. helps to set my day for gratitude. Yeah. Um, there's always so many things going on, but to start with that sense uh, is really lovely. Yeah, so very, very helpful. Thank you for bringing that to us. So, you know, um, what are some things that we can do once we get going in our day? Yeah. Well, the other technique that I use um, and is I have a three-minute timer, and I have it sitting on my desk, and I use this periodically throughout my day. Um, especially, I find it especially helpful when I'm maybe changing projects or tasks, right, or something that I'm working on. And I stop, I turn my timer. I like to look at it, so it gives me a visual. Just take three minutes to do some more deep breathing, really focus on your breath. You can also close your eyes. A lot of people like to actually put their hand on their abdomen, really feel it expand as you're focusing on your breath. Mm -hmm. um, just really naturally inhale and really try to keep your thoughts directed to just your breath. So that you're, as your mind goes back to, oh, I'm gonna go back and do this task, bring it back to just like focusing on your breath, even for just three minutes, uh -huh. really helps. It increases the oxygen supply to your brain. It helps kind of center you. And it's a great practice before you like closing one project that you're working on and transitioning to the next. And you've talked about breathing a couple of times. Are there mm -hmm. certain ways that you suggest people breathe for this? Um, there's lots of different resources you can go to on that. Okay. I do five really deep breaths, mm -hmm. like again, where you can hold it, really hold your tummy, really feel it expand in your abdomen and then really expand. Mm -hmm. right? And so you're really increasing that oxygen. Breathing through your nose. Breathing through your nose and breathing out through your mouth. Okay. And I do five of those, just really focusing on that. Mm -hmm. um, there's another strategy. A lot of people will use this. It works really well, especially with your children. Okay. You can put a pillow or a stuffed animal on, on their tummies, right, if you want to incorporate a mindfulness practice with your kids. Um, and they can watch it, and they'll just watch it rise and fall. Like, have them just focus on the stuffed animal or the pillow that's on their tummy. You can do it, too. I've done a stuffed animal on my tummy. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, and just really focus on the going up and down so that you're really getting those deep breaths. And do five of those. Um, deep breathing, I think I mentioned that, is so important because it increases the supply of oxygen to your brain. Mm -hmm. um, and it specifically, in a mindfulness practice, it stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system, which promotes a state of calmness. I mean, it's your body doing its natural calming. It releases some of those endorphins in your brain. It helps you calm and center yourself. Um, breathing techniques help you feel connected in your body, so you're not mm -hmm. living in your head. That's where a lot of our stress and anxiety right. gets right. taken. If you can like bring it your center and bring it to your body, then it helps kind of bring that calmness. Um, and again, like if you can incorporate, the, there's a lot of science around this that I think is really fascinating, but deep breathing for 20 to 30 minutes practiced regularly throughout your day. So you, you wouldn't have to do it for 20 or 30 minutes at a time. That's a lot. Yeah. But if you can do it in five minute chunks in the morning and five minutes at lunch, and it has found to dramatically reduce stress and anxiety for people. And 
I mean, we're talking about creating a new habit. Mm -hmm. And so one thing I've heard, too, is that if, if even if you can set the intention that you're going to try this for three weeks, that will help you to set a habit. Absolutely. Absolutely. 21 days, right? Mm -hmm. Doing something for 21 days helps set that ritual in your life. Mm -hmm. Great. Very consistently. That, I mean, I, I can see doing that. Sometimes it might seem more obvious to other people in the room mm -hmm. um, if you're doing it at work. For instance, so what are, um, are there some other things that you would suggest that people could do, like in a work day, if they're actually in the office or something, and they may be able to do what you just said, depending yeah. on what kind of office they have and so forth. But what what's something else you could do in the office? Yeah, it's hard to lay down and put a stuffed animal on your tummy. In the that of could office. be a little obvious. <laughs> that could be a lot. Um, another good practice, and um, very easy again. You're looking to just add five minutes, but ten minutes here is reserve five or ten minutes in your lunch break and yeah. do a mindful walk. Um, I sometimes will put on my headphones and play a, my favorite piece of inspirational music that kind of takes me out of my head and just lets me be really present to the music in my body. Um, there's again lots of guided meditation apps mm -hmm. that you can go to. Um, walking, uh, walking meditation is very common. Mm -hmm. And sort of do that for five or ten minutes. Um, I use apps like Mindfulness or Calm, which also has a British yes, British, British give it a little different like <laughs> culture there. Um, I also want to mention while we're talking about these is that Kaiser Permanente has made some of these resources free mm -hmm. to people. Um, I think particularly the Calm app. So if you are a Kaiser Permanente member you may have access to some of these applications. This is That's something. really good to know. I actually yeah. wanted to download the app, and I didn't want to pay for it. Yeah. So, but if it's free, that's awesome. Yeah, but if, you, if you're if you a Kaiser Permanente member or other insurances, you might want to look at that, because I know this is a, a practice that a lot of medical institutions are definitely incorporating, because it promotes overall health and well-being. Mm -hmm. um, again, you know, you can Google people. There's a lot of free resources, particularly now with COVID. Um, I've noticed like a lot of the mindfulness teachers that I follow have put resources up for free for people mm -hmm. to help to help with this. Um, for a person in particular that I happen to love is Jack Kornfeld. Um, and you can go to his website, jackkornfeld.com, and he has an enormous amount of resources available. And he has a great walking meditation that I use. And what was the blog that you mentioned one time that we went to? Um, it was, oh, I think, around meditation. 10%. 10%. Yes, 10%.com. Yeah. They have a more of a paid model, but they're great. They have amazing resources. And but a lot of these teachers, especially during this period of time, because it has been so stressful, are sharing free resources for folks. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. So, and you can also maybe do this while you're eating. Yes, you're yes. Eating. I mean, I think we've heard a lot about this. This has been very common, um, in especially if you're trying to um, adapt a more healthy eating style, right? Mm -hmm. Is mindfulness in your eating practice. And this is something we should all do is get away from our desk, right? Don't eat your lunch in front of your desk. Really take time, 20, 30 minutes dedicated to your meal and really mm -hmm. focus on slowing down, savoring each bite, being really, again, this brings you back to your body, right? Because mm -hmm. it's your body sensation, it's not your mind thinking. Savor the bite, really focus on the taste. Um, a nice practice, too, is even to start thinking about where that food may have come from, right? And gratitude to, you know, the farmers that pick the lettuce that's in your salad or mm -hmm. that raise the chicken, right? So, again, it takes you out of your body. and The gratitude practice helps calm and bring also those sympathetic nerves mm -hmm. into Sounds like a really good practice, especially yeah. leaving your desk. Especially the leaving your desk part. Yes. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think some of these things during the day will be great. And I also mm -hmm. know, like, as we get uh, towards the evening, um, like, for bedtime for me, my mind is still racing with everything that I have to do because it seems like there's so many priorities. And, and frankly, it seems like things take longer when you have social distancing. Uh, even though you have this wonderful technology, it just takes longer. So my, my mind is racing. So is there something that you can suggest uh, for bedtime to help us? I know you mentioned it might help sleep. What can we do at that point? Well, if there's any point in your day where you can incorporate a mindfulness practice, I would suggest at nighttime. Um, 
we know the impact of having a mindfulness practice before sleep is so beneficial, improving both the quality and quantity. And we know how important sleep is, right? Sure. especially right now, um, mm -hmm. especially in dealing with stress and anxiety in a constant changing environment, building your immune system. I mean, the more sleep you can get and the more healthy, deep sleep you can get, the more beneficial. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, if you're going to sleep or mm -hmm. take five minutes and really, again, bring yourself into your body, kind of focus on how your pillow feels the sheets feel. Um, take some deep breaths, really get that oxygen into your system. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't work, again, a lot of those apps that I mentioned have some wonderful guided meditations, particularly guided for deep sleep. It's a big issue in mindfulness, mm -hmm. um, so that's a great place to go to. There's also a good, some good free resources. I frequently will use a repeat of Kind of a mantra to myself, I'll repeat a little phrase to myself uh -huh. that kind of gets my mind, gets me out of my mind and just kind of focused a little bit on just relaxing. Um, something like, I'm breathing in calm, I'm breathing out peace. That's one I use frequently. And you just kind of repeat that to yourself. You can repeat it out verbally um, if your partner doesn't mind hearing you talk, <laughs> if you have a partner. Yes. Or you can just say it to yourself in your head. And, and, you know, frequently as you're doing a mindfulness, it's very, especially at nighttime, especially for me, I notice it's very hard to quiet that inner voice yes. sometimes. Mm -hmm. So don't judge yourself, right? If your mind starts to take off, just come back. Come back to that statement again. And just slowly, you know, be gentle. Be very gentle with yourself. Mm -hmm. And ease into sleep. How did you pick that mantra? Um, that was actually a friend that shared that with me. And I was like, oh, can you use that? I like that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm breathing in calm and I'm breathing out peace. And that, that goes kind of back to, I think, my personal intention, too, and how I hope to live most of my days. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, um, so to do a quick recap, you want to just touch base on those five simple sure. practices? Yeah. Five, again, like anywhere in your day that you can add five minutes of mindfulness, it helps benefit, it helps your health. It helps reduce anxiety and depression. That's going to boost your immune system. If you're doing some of that deep breathing, you're bringing in more of that oxygen to your body, and that's just going to help all aspects of your health, right? Um, so you can start your day with an intention. Just mm -hmm. have set the tone for how you want to live your day. Before you even get out Before of bed. Before you even get out of bed. Like, don't do anything. Don't pick up your phone. <laughs> um, you can, you know, take a break. In the middle of your day, go for an intentional walk. Um, have a little timer on your desk. You know, periodically just take some time for yourself, a little mental vacation, so to speak. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, do some deep breathing. Reset yourself before you start your next project. Um, mindful eating is a great one. Mm -hmm. Incorporating a little gratitude practice. Um, and then, of course, before bedtime. Super important. These are... Wonderful traits. I feel calmer just listening to her. <laughs> so, I mean, if I could actually do this every day, that would be great. And I think it could be so helpful for so many people um, right now. People who are living on Hope Community properties, people in the broader community. We need this now. We need to take care of ourselves now. And so, um, thank you for sharing those five, yeah. those I've, five tips. I've noticed, even with our family, as we're you, know, you had a whole different level of stress being in quarantine, but now as you're thinking about going back out, what does that mean? So, so your your husband and your kids have they use these practices as well? They do. We we're not as dedicated as we would like to be. We'd love to be one of those people that sits for 20, 30 minutes at a time. Um, but definitely my son uses these mindfulness practices, particularly deep breathing when mm -hmm. he gets very stressed. Um, and my husband as well, we've noticed how important these practices have been in the context of our relationship mm -hmm. um, because we've been together for a we've all yes. been together a lot right and so being mindful of just paying attention to what is going on in your brain before you actually blurt something out right that yes. could be hurtful or create problems um, mm -hmm. so we've, we've both been really grateful that we've had a mindfulness practice because we've noticed mm -hmm. that it's coming and how do you think it, you've been doing this for a while, so how do you think it's really affected your life um, to 
to build this practice? Dramatically. I mean, I came to building a meditation and mindfulness practice um, in a period of my life where I was really, I was having anxiety. I was having anxiety attacks um, that felt like heart attacks. So um, I worked with a mindfulness coach, thanks to Kaiser Permanente, right? They were the first one that really said, okay, this is where you need to start. Nice. Um, and it's really been incredibly beneficial, not only in dealing with anxiety, but like I said, I, I noticed the impact in my personal relationships um, and where, you know, just paying attention to thoughts before you say something and how it, what a difference that makes for people. Well, thank you so much yeah, for being yeah. here today and sharing your expertise. I have to say that from the receiver side, being around Jamie is a pleasure. Yeah, and maybe it's the mindfulness, but <laughs> I mean, everything you bring to the table in terms of expertise and, and skill, but also that connectedness with people. And, and part of that may be this practice. So, um, I hope so. It's, been, <laughs> it's been a pleasure to work with you, and I'm so happy that you're, you're here today. So we also are, um, as part of the show, going to share a little bit about um, books for you each time because we want you to have um, some inspiration to take some of this time for learning and also just to have a really pleasant, enjoyable pastime. Almost all the books that we um, talk about on the show and review are downloadable at the Denver Public Library. And so if, um, hopefully you'll get a chance to look at some of the reviews, download some of the books. Of course, you can always buy them at your favorite um, book vendor as well. And if at any point you'd like to share a book review from one of your favorite books, please feel free to email us at info at hopecommunities.org and we'd love to get a videotape of you. If you don't mind me adding something. Um, speaking of Denver Public Library, um, they, they're not open yet, but they have opened their returns. So if you do happen to have books that belong to the Denver Public Library, they're Sorry. asking if you can please get those back. They have extended all the due dates till July 20th, so there's no fines or, I mean, mm -hmm. we didn't have that with the Denver Public Library anyway, but they do have to keep them in quarantine before they can put them back out into circulation. Okay. So if you can get them to them so they can start that process, that would be great. And they're also going to start curbside service again July 7th. So for those of us who like to hold a book in our hand, I do too, I do too. <laughs> um, that will be coming back online very soon. And you can go to their um, denverlibrary.org, um, and they have a little bullet up at the top, COVID-19, for updates and how they're moving back into that. And I just was going to say, you know that I have, speaking of mindfulness and gratitude practice, right, um, I know that I've missed a lot of different things in my life that were part of my daily life that I think I took for granted for sure. Mm -hmm. And I have to say the library is definitely one of them. How grateful I am that we have something like that, to have mm -hmm. unlimited information and resources available to us in our charge. Yes. I love the library. What a gift. What a gift. So Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, our book review today is going to be presented to us by Tracy Stewart. Um, Tracy is one of our board members, and she has been uh, in the field of philanthropy for a long time. She is reviewing The Color of Law by Richard Rothstein. Uh, the book is enlightening and disturbing as it explores the myth that America's cities came to be racially divided through natural and private segregation. And really, the book showed through research just how integral federal, state, and local governments were in designing programs and policies that helped to create and reinforce neighborhood segregation. In fact, the book goes further on to show how those same discriminatory practices exist today and other ways that those discriminations have impacted opportunity and access to um, economic opportunity for so many. This is a really important book for learning right now, and, and Tracy does a remarkable and fascinating review. So please listen to her review, which will be posted in just a few minutes on our Facebook page. And please try to carve out space to, to read the book. I think that you will really enjoy it and that you really um, learn a lot from it. Yeah. Yes, I will. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really been very so I hope you um, have a great week. Uh, thanks again for joining us today. 
Uh, we want you to take time to take care of yourself mentally and physically. I think that this mindful practice, mindfulness practice, might be able to help you out a lot. Uh, we hope that you will get out in nature. It's always been a way to replenish for me, but we want you to be safe and keep your distance, your social distance from people. Uh, and masks are really important. We say that every time, but that's because it's so intricately important to keep you safe and to keep other people safe who are around you. Uh, if at any time you want to look for resources, please go to our website at hopecommunities.org. Lots of resources on there. If you go to the tab about us and then our team, you can see every single staff member uh, at Hope Communities and the contact information. So if you need some specific help and want to reach out, please do so. Also, you can always email us with a question or a request for service um, or maybe a request to do a book review at info at hopecommunities.org. Thanks again for joining us. It's been a pleasure to be with you today. Bye-bye.